Hello everyone and welcome to the Extreme Tick channel guys So for today's video I'm gonna show you about uh, Extreme uh, Tanks and Stick Out uh, When to use it, how to use it So this is one of the example uh, for the Weldolet uh, It's a perfect example for a really tight uh, For the tight spot and uh, the, the way how you place your root in So a little tip here, uh, when you drill a hole, once you mark uh, your drill point Once you put a center punch a uh, piece of uh, channel iron uh, works perfect. Make it uh, level, strap it around with uh, chain grips and set up your uh, mag drill. Mag drill is the perfect tool to drill a hole on the pipes. Uh, definitely you, you want to avoid uh, drilling by, uh, by hand using a cordless drill or whatever is going to bounce all over the place. So once you set up, uh, double check for pipe, everything is uh, level, squared and uh, you can start drilling. Uh, the good thing about a mag drill uh, is that keep that cookie and uh, inside that uh, drill bit, so it doesn't fell uh, fell in in that uh, line. Especially if you're in a field uh, up on the line, there's no access, so definitely you don't want to drop cookie inside and all that shavings. That's why mag drill is, works perfect, especially set up like this. It makes your life way easier. And yeah, usually that cookie stays in a in the drill bit. Not in this case, but the good thing is it's, uh, it's uh, accessible, so we can uh, we can take it out. So once you clean all that pipe burrs around with a pencil grinder, uh, use a grinder, uh, clean all that welding area, uh, nice and clean. Remove the old mile scale. Uh, this is what I like to do for a gap 532 on that weldolet. It's inch and a three quarter weldolet or socolet. Uh, one tack, uh, put the level, make it nice and square, everything's level, then I'm gonna put another tack. It's gonna be three tacks all together for that well, uh, nothing fancy, just the bridge tacks, just to keep that in place. Uh, the main thing is here, just to keep that uh, well uh, as it as it is square. So for the stick out, uh, as you can see here, definitely far away from that bevel, from that edge. So we gotta go out with the extreme stick out. Unfortunately, I didn't measure the exact. But the reference, this is probably too much. So the reference is uh, top cup is touching that valve and uh, and the point of my tungsten is reaching uh, top and the bottom of that uh, of the joint. So for the shielding gas coverage uh, on a dead stick out, you want to go with a 4550. I'm around 45 here for the for the, for the shield gas. Uh, the shielding gas with uh, 4550 liters per minute uh, that's a good coverage for tungsten prevents for any contamination and uh, with a with a bigger stick out uh, with a good uh, gas coverage uh, you keep uh, keep the tungsten uh, clean uh, keeps your weld puddle clean otherwise uh, if you got very poor coverage uh, they'll affect your tungsten and the weld puddle it'll be just uh, impossible to weld the, the one thing as well on the welding stuff like this uh, uh, gas lens the the gas lens is uh, really uh, crucial for the gas lens uh, you want to use uh, like this is 1.8 gas lens on this one so for this uh, argon flow for this coverage it allows you to extend that tungsten stick out that much and then you got way better visibility of the weld pool and uh, especially in a tight axis welds like this so the half of the route is done just gonna check out uh check gonna go check out inside and that's how the route looks like the route looks good you don't wanna you don't wanna have any excessive uh root build up or uh, grapes inside even though if it's uh, small welds and uh, usually the small welds, small stuff usually requires lots of skills, lots of patient, uh, in my opinion, uh, more work than on a bigger diameter pipes, especially small stuff like this. Uh, even though there's no x-ray or anything, uh, you have to make a nice good route. It's uh, gotta be a visual inspection. As you can see here, so the same thing is uh, on a horizontal weld, uh, burn the top and the bottom edges, you want to add rod, you can keep rod on the top or uh, deep in the middle and stretch that puddle. And for the tie-in, same thing, pause on the sides or on the top and the bottom and then just uh, add wire as required. You want to have nice, uh, nice and good connection here. 
once you go on the top, add rod, bottom, and a little pause here in the middle, and then just go over it, half inch, uh, like it for any tie-in. And the main thing uh, is just uh, don't dip too much that tungsten, try to not dip it too much just uh, to prevent contamination. The root is done. The only thing here also as well is uh, keep the valve at uh, level as it was. So the good thing is uh, each pass finish on the opposite sides. As, uh, as we know the TIG is prone to pull, especially on a small stuff like this. So we're going to lower stick out. Same thing, re reference gonna be touching the cup of the top of that, uh, top of the cup touching the valve and and uh, tip of the tungsten be up to five mil from, uh, from that root pass. Run a buffing wheel for each pass. Uh, right now, uh, I don't know, did I mention uh, that's a 1.8 rod, 1.8 uh, uh, tungsten, 2% uh, oriated and a cup size eight. For the root pass, I was running around 130 amps, and for the hard pass, I got 10 amps up, so around 140. Maybe you can go uh, like a uh, smaller cap. I started with cap size 8, so I'm just gonna finish. Just gonna continue and finish all that well with the cap size 8. Yeah, for the hard pass, uh, as you can see, I'm uh, holding that rod up and uh, stretching that paddle down. It's more like a kind of freehand here, not really walking the cup. And that's it, there is some uh, impurities, uh, that's from the pipe and from, from the valve outlet, that's why it's good to run the buffing wheel. As I said, uh, finish each pass on the opposite side to keep the valve outlet. Uh, now we're gonna run one more pass here before we start doing uh, passes for, uh, for a capping. Okay, one more pass, same thing, uh, keeping the rod on the top, stretching the paddle down. It's a little bit uh, slower process. And that's it. And now we're gonna run uh, up to that shoulder. The, that's the shoulder of the well. So I'm gonna run one pass at the bottom. I just remelted that uh, the the bottom. It was like a little like a like a cold lap here at the bottom. So I'm now just gonna run one more pass uh, at the bottom. I'm kind of trying to walk the cap. You can freehand, uh, as I said, you can switch the cups, uh, smaller cup, bigger cup, whatever works better for you. Same thing, I'm keeping that rod at the top. And just stretching that puddle in to the bottom. Okay, that's it for the for the bottom pass. Now we're gonna now I'm gonna run one more pass up to that uh, shoulder. As you can see here, that shoulder. You don't go, you don't want to pass that shoulder. I've seen some guys they go uh, up above that shoulder to that stamping stamping. Yeah, definitely no need for that. The main thing here is uh, here is uh, inclination at the angle how you. Uh, Keeping your um, tungsten inclination torch, you don't want to go too much up uh, or pause as you're going to create uh, undercuts. Just go a little below that shoulder and uh, you move, uh, you stretch that puddle to cover that shoulder. And in the same time, uh, you want to uh, keep uh, the same the same width at the bottom as well. I'm around 150 amps for this one. Okay, that's uh, that's the top pass. As you can see now, that should be like uh, done 
done work uh, done job but uh, I'm not really happy not really satisfied with that as you can see like uh, it's like a cold lap don't really like the appearance even there is no undercut uh, I mean this should be good as well but I just uh, I don't like it so I'm thinking about running a second pass uh, at the bottom to cover to cover all this so the bottom pass is gonna be the final one same thing 150 amps And that's pretty much the, that thing uh, with a, with a, if you got an extreme stick out, if you got uh, tight uh, welds, you can pull it out. Uh, make sure it's not uh, like a collet body. Uh, they are not really good. They hit too much. Uh, they they, they, uh, they can't handle too much uh, argon flow. But uh, for the with the gas lens, uh, in this case one eight, uh, you can really crank that. Uh, shielding gas and it's gonna cover your weld puddle your tungsten uh, you can still have a nice good control as uh, as i show you in the beginning of this video it was like over 20 mil and uh, everything was good everything was okay and that's it uh, i think this is way way better than what it was didn't like that first one so i think this is good that's it pretty much for today's video guys i uh, hope you like it hope you enjoyed thanks you uh, thank you for uh, for your support for everything so far and uh, keep up the good work uh, see you in the next one guys take care